Hi guys, we have three meters here from Peak Electronic Design Limited. I've had these for about a year and a half or so and I thought it was time we should uh, do a review. We have the ESR70, the LCR40 and the DCA55. The one we'll be uh, concentrating most on in the next video will be the ESR70. Uh, that's mainly because it's the most popular one for uh, for the engineers and uh, we have a special offer currently on the forum uh, where you can save a fair bit of money if you'd like to purchase one of these. So yeah we're just going to run through uh, the ECR, ESR70 model first and then we'll probably take a closer look at the other two in uh, probably a later video. But uh, yeah, lovely meters. Uh, all made in the UK. Um, Peak Electronics are up in uh, Buxton in Derbyshire and a really nice company to deal with. They uh, made some modifications after we suggested a few points of improvement a year or two ago for us on the ESR70. I think, I can't remember now, but I think one of the things we weren't happy with was the auto off time. I think we asked for it if it could be made slightly longer and it was and uh, also the uh, leads were made slightly longer as well but we'll cover that in more detail in the next video but this is just a quick intro video and look at these three meters hi guys right this will be a closer look at the peak electronic design limited esr 70 it is an esr low resistance and capacitance meter and it also has audible alerts uh, and it also has an automatic discharge function uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Just a little closer look for you, hopefully without any reflections from the uh, LCD panel. Uh, well, probably plenty of reflections. Let me point it up at the ceiling. There you go. That's the lead length there one of the things we uh, asked to be improved slightly a year and a half or a couple of years ago just to give it slightly longer leads and uh, it's supplied as standard with these very nice gold plated crop clips and they just attach with these uh, gold plated leads like that Obviously that makes the leads a little bit longer. You can get a number of different leads, sorry, a number of different probes uh, with this. Currently on the forum it's being sold as a special offer and you will get the gold crop clips and you will also get these very sharp probe tips. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see them. I haven't got the macro on today on the camera. But hopefully you'll be able to see those against my jacket. Again, these are probably the most popular clips. They just plug in like that. They're really, really sharp, so you can do in-circuit testing very easily with these. Um, I've had them for, a, well, it must be a couple of years I guess now, and they're still as sharp as they were when they were brand new. I'm just going to take those off and put the crop clips back on for a second. Now when you fire this up by pressing the on button you'll see what happens. Just a quick look at the menu and then it goes straight into monitoring for the component and if I just happen to short out these crop clips you'll see that it will read instantly. Yeah, so it's uh, that's read that. That's just the short on the crop clips. Um, I'm just going to turn it off again. One of the features is the sound which you can turn off. You just need to press and hold the on button down for a split second longer. Sound on. And if we just turn it off and repeat that sound off. 
it couldn't be any easier or quicker to toggle between the two. So we'll have sound on for the video. And that's back on again. Now one of the important features of this is the calibration. I would recommend calibrating it uh, you know, fairly frequently. I was just testing some low ohms resistors and wasn't entirely happy with the readings I was getting. Uh, but as soon as I would calibrated the unit it was absolutely fine. And calibration is achieved simply by pressing and holding the on button for about five seconds uh, to bring up the menu. I'll do that now. Right, uh, that says probe compensation and short the probes out. So all you do is just going to short out the crocodile clips. And that now says, what does it say? Short probes and press test, which is that one there. Okay, well that's timed out, so I'm going to have to do it again. It's one of the auto off. Uh, features of, uh, of this unit. So let me just turn it on. That's it gone into auto calibration mode. I'm just going to quickly put the crop clips together and then we'll just press test. It says OK, that's it done, and then it will power off. So just unshort the crop clips and uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll be fully calibrated and good to go. I don't know how often Peak recommend doing that, but uh, you know, I guess a once a month scenario probably wouldn't uh, wouldn't go amiss. I haven't calibrated it but, uh, for absolutely ages, and it was slightly out. Um, and I suppose you should probably calibrate it if you change tips as well. If you're measuring very low resistance components, and it's you know it's critical. Anyway, so. That's about it. I can't remember off the top of my head the auto off time, but I don't think we need to worry about that. There is an auto off time, obviously, to save on uh, battery power. Um, so, yeah. It would be nice if it was perhaps uh, adjustable within the menus, uh, or you could turn the device on permanently if you were about to, have to test the whole batch of components. But most of the time, uh, it will sit there waiting to analyze a component and it gives you long enough to perhaps remove a capacitor from uh, the circuit and uh, test it uh, and it will still be you know, waiting to analyse, it won't have turned itself off. Uh, anyway, it comes with a very nice printed uh, user guide. This covers the, the ESR and the SR Plus models and it will just take you through in fact, there's a very quick start and guide there, uh, ready to go. Um, just take a look at the notes on page four. Um, just an introduction here. Uh, the ESR measurement range is 0 to 20 ohms and 40 ohms for the ESR 70, which is the one we're looking at today. The ESR resolution is as low as 0 0.01 ohms. The capacitance range is 1 microfarad to 22,000 microfarads and it can be used for low ohms resistance checking as well. Uh, there's an integrated control discharge circuit uh, which reduces the need for the user to manually discharge capacitors before test. And you do need to note the little asterisk there. Um, the discharge circuitry exists to ensure that a charge capacitor is less likely to damage the unit. For example, if the capacitor under test has a potential of a few tens of volts across it, the charge is removed automatically. And it is your responsibility to ensure that any dangerously charged caps are safely discharged before connection to the unit. You put that across a mains bridge cap that's charged and you will blow the meter up. Absolutely no question about it. Uh, but uh, anything under 50 volts, it will detect and discharge on its own and we'll have a look at that uh, in a moment. Obviously it must never be connected to a, a device that's powered and uh, you must discharge capacitors uh, first otherwise you will damage the equipment and invalidate your warranty. Uh, it goes on to describe ESR uh, which we'll all be familiar with. 
Um, it also says here that capacitor, ma capacitor manufacturers typically quote the ESR of their products out of 100, 100 kilohertz, uh, which is the same test frequency as this uses. So uh, it's useful to know uh, to, uh, to know that most uh, capacitor testers, I think, test at 100 kilohertz anyway. Um, then goes on to describe how to analyze capacitors, and what to expect, and the various tones that you'll hear. There is a typical uh, ESR value table there, and uh, I've got some components here that we will just have a look at and compare my findings to the findings uh, on the chart. Um, yeah, we have audible alerts and this is on the ESR70 only model. Uh, start analysis is a short blip, end analysis is a short blip. If the measured ESR is greater than 40 ohms you'll get a high low beep bop noise as it says here. <laughs> the measured ESR of below 5 will be a single bell ping and the measured ESR of less than 1 ohms will be a double bell ping pong or ping ping it says here. The audible alerts can be turned off as I've just shown and uh, yeah, probe compensation is important and we've just shown how to do that. Yeah, it's just suggesting here that you use a fixed resistor of 1 or, or 1 and 10 ohms to verify the correct ESR reading respectively. Uh, I've already done that so that's not a not an issue. Um, just goes on to talk about care. This uses a small 12 volt battery which I've got hanging up on the wall here. Just uh, readily available 12 volt. It's a, um, I don't know what the number is, it says 2016 but I don't know whether that's a Kodak only number. But anyway, whatever. There is a low battery warning on the meter and uh, it will not carry on working once it's got to that low battery level it will, uh, it, turn it, it will turn itself off. There are various batteries suitable, types include 23A, V23A, GP23A and, and MN21. Uh, so uh, yeah, battery access is by removing the back cover and we'll look at that uh, in a while. Quick troubleshooting guide and uh, yeah, some technical specifications and all the values are checked at 25 degrees uh, C which it certainly isn't in the workshop at the moment. It's really cold in here. Um, so yeah there's various things listed here. Capac capacitance accuracy, ESR measurement range, the abuse voltage um, and talking, well, yeah, the tests have been done at 10 microfarad, the auto discharge voltage limit is plus or minus 50 volts. So yeah, good little manual, no chinglish in here, all produced in the UK by uh, Jeremy Siddons at uh, Peak Electronics and I have to thank Jeremy for these review units as well. I've had them quite a while but have uh, never got around to doing the review properly although they've uh, been on the forum uh, for a long time. So anyway, um, what we've lined up is some known good capacitors and some known faulty ones. Now I just thought we would compare <coughs> excuse me, some readings. I'm just going to uh, stop this video clip. I don't want to make this one huge long video. Uh, just in case anything goes wrong with it. So we'll just uh, pause and go on to a new clip. Okay, I've just set this up hopefully without too much um, reflection off the LCD panel. It's quite hard in here with where all the lights and things are. Hopefully that won't be too bad. What I've got here is a lineup of various uh, new capacitors and I just thought we would uh, show you these being tested and uh, just compare the results with uh, the readings I obtained off of my capacitor wizard earlier on and the, um, the actual values of the capacitors were measured with this Peak Tech 3710. Um, so just for comparison, see uh, 
see what you think for accuracy and how they compare. So first up is a small 3.3 mic 63 volt cap. I'm just going to see if I can lay that down. Oh, there you saw the auto off time kicking in there. Let's just power that up again. Just going to try and read this. So we've got a reading of 3.27 mic at 1.38 uh, ohms for ESR. Uh, that compared earlier with a value of 3.3, so that's pretty much spot on, and an ESR of 2, and we've got it at 1.3 here. I have calibrated this uh, earlier on, I think I showed that in the earlier video, so it's, it's, it's going to be as good as we can get. Uh, next up is a 33 mic at 63 volts. Um, see if I can get this in vision at the same time as the meter's working. Try that again, if I wasn't on it properly. Okay, so we've got a reading of 30.78 and ESR of 0.67, and earlier we had 31.8 and an ESR of 0.7. So yeah, that uh, pretty much tallies with uh, with what we had earlier on. Next up is 47 mic at 100 volts. Uh, notice how the display stays with the last readings until it powers off or until you touch the probes onto a new component. There we have a reading of 46.6 and an ESR of 0.2 and earlier we had a reading of 47.1 and an ESR of 0.1 so you know, I mean, really not much uh, in here. when you're at this level you know that cap is, uh, is going to be good. Hopefully you can still see that display. Next up is a 68 mic at 63 volts. And we have a reading of 65.8 and uh, 0.34 for ESR. And we had 0.2 earlier and 66.6. .6. So pretty close again. Next up is a 470 at 35 volts. This time we have 465 and 0.18 and earlier we had uh, 463 and uh, because the cap wizard is an analog meter we had a, an ESR of zero. It was, uh, you know, I couldn't distinguish on the analog scale between uh, the zero and, uh, and another value. Right, the peak tech can't measure up at this high uh, capacitance so we don't have a value for this but it's a thousand mic at 35 volts and we'll just connect that and we have uh, 1036 mic and 0.16 and uh, again these were not distinguishable from zero on the analog uh, capacitor wizard. Same goes for this one. This is a 3,300 mic, 20 volt, sorry, 25 volt cap. Notice as the capacitance goes up, the measuring time takes a little longer. There we go, and that's measuring 3,212 at 0.16. Um, Mostly we're only interested in ESR readings and you'll notice that the ESR reading comes up near instantly and only the capacitance value takes longer. You don't have to wait for it. So if we do this, uh, we've got the ESR reading which is all we're interested in and we could now move on to the next component. But if you want to know the value of the capacitor you just wait and it will come up. Higher the value seems to take the longer amount of time, but you do not have to wait for the capacitance value. If that doesn't interest you, uh, then uh, you don't have to wait for it. You can just get the ESR up and move on. We've got a selection of uh, 40 components as well, and I just thought I'd show you those. Here we have a 470 at 25 volts, clearly domed uh, head. So if we pop that across, okay, you hopefully heard the slight difference in tone there. It says in circuit slash leaky and an ESR of 5.9, which is uh, obviously unacceptable. 
and that coupled with the visual appearance means you're 100% sure that that cap capacitor has had it. Here we have another one, a slightly domed top again, and this one is a thousand mic at 35 volts. And we'll just pop the probes across there. And again, we've got the same in circuit or leaky reading and the ESR of 1.56. So again, the ESR should be much lower than that on a 1000 mic cap of any quality and uh, it's clearly uh, bolted slightly on the top as well. So another one for the bin. Now this one is a 1000 mic 63, uh, quite a substantial capacitor this one and again you can see this black it should not be on the top um, and uh, it's slightly bulged at the top as well. Just get a reading. <clears throat> okay, so the capacitance is down at 706, clearly not correct, and the ESR is 5.2, so um, fail on both accounts. Now we have a cap here which is 1000 at 16 volts, uh, no visible signs of distress, uh, but I've changed this based on the ESR readings. Char. Sorry, yeah, I based it on the capacitance readings. Uh, I, this was a set that I knew these played up in. So although there's no visual clue, there was when it was taken out. It's done at 808. The ESR of 0.62 is, is quite low, but it's not as good as it uh, probably should be. So yeah, you do have to be sometimes careful. You can't always go by visual, uh, visual means. Uh, you might need to pop one of these out and take a, a closer look at all the readings that you're able to take. Um, same with this one, this is a second capacitor of the same value in the same set. I can't remember off the top of my head what it came out of, but I knew they were prone to fail. So ESR at 0.56 and capacitance down at 817, so again, fail. Uh, now this one, <laughs> blown to pieces, actually blown the bottom out unusually rather than uh, the top. Uh, it is a 35 volt at 680. And I've got a sneaky feeling that we will get no reading of this whatsoever, but let's try it. If I can get the probes on. Okay, there we go. Right, well, as you see, the ESR is greater than 40 ohms, and the capacitor says uh, in circuit or leaky, and uh, that's no great surprise. And you'll probably, hopefully, have heard the difference in the tone that was made when the ESR was greater than 40. With a bit of practice, of course, you don't even need to look at the screen. You can just go purely on the, the tones very often. Um, so that's that. That's some, uh, a list of 40 ones. Um, the other thing this is great for is if you want to check any uh, low resistance components. What I've got here is a uh, 0.22 uh, <coughs> excuse me, and a 0.18. Uh, fusible resistor. Uh, hardly ever use this sort of thing these days, uh, but in the old days, uh, very often a low resistance a resistor could rise slightly in value and cause all sorts of problems. And correct me if I'm wrong, didn't we have some sharp sets that used to do that? There were some of these low ohms resistors in, around the power supply area. Anyway, Let's just fire that up. I've switched now to the crop clips and uh, we're going to clip these in as close as we can to the main body and check the reading. Well that's 0.22 and uh, check my glasses off. Yeah that is the 0.22 resistor so that is absolutely spot on that reading. And if we uh, swap this over to the 0.18 We have 0.2, tiny, tiny fraction out, but uh, again, nothing to worry about. You're really, really interested if these have risen uh, quite dramatically in value normally. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. The uh, the offer at the moment on the forum includes these these extra probes, and I think they really are a must. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
Actually, I'll just grab a board and we'll just uh, show you a couple of in circuit readings and how that can uh, that can fluctuate. I'm just going to reattach the sharp probes and uh, I'll just grab a board. Right, and uh, the board I've grabbed, just because it was on the side, is a Ysus, and it's one of those where the 33 mic caps can play up and uh, cause all sorts of issues. So I'm just going to go over a few of them, and we'll see how the uh, in-circuit readings uh, can, uh, can vary. So this is a 33 surface mount. And you can see that's up at 414. But the ESR is good, so I think we can ignore the capacitance and uh, just go by the ESR. This is a 68 mic. Again, miles out. Can't rely on that for the capacitance, and nor would you expect to really in circuit. This is another 33. Yeah, miles out, but ESR is good. Another 33 over on this side. Okay. Unfortunately, this is a good board, and there are no 40 components on it. I'm quite happy with the ESR readings that we're getting. So you get the idea. That one was again 33 mics. So in circuit, you cannot rely on the capacitance reading, but you're not really going to be expecting to do that. You're really interested in the ESR values and uh, these you can rely on in circuit. That is a 33 and that reading for ESR is a fraction higher I think. That is one of those uh, in the 15 volt rail that can cause problems. Just going to go over to another 33 here. You see the difference that's 0.38. Go back to the other one and that is 1.27. So I would be changing that uh, I suspect and uh, to see what the difference is. I'm just going to grab some surface mount caps and just swap this over quickly. See, uh, see how these read for ESR and uh, actual value. Just get some tweezers to lift these out. So what have we got? Let's try a 22. This is 22 at 50 volts. See if I can move that into frame. I'll just lower this down a fraction. There we are. Hopefully you can see it just in here. A bit fiddly. Let's get on there. Okay, so uh, we've got 21.2 as the value, and the ESR is 1.65. So yeah, reasonably high on uh, on that 22. I don't know whether we've got any. 33s, uh, no that's 47, well, let's try 47, this is uh, 47 at 35 volts, I'll just pop that there, hope it's just in frame, and we've got 45 at uh, 1.04, so it's the ESR is going down as we're going up in value I suspect, let's try a 220, Okay, so we've got 209 as the capacitance and 0.62 as the ESR, so clearly no issues there. Well, that's 220 at 16 volts. Here we have a 470 at 16 volts. I'm expecting a lower ESR reading. I messed that up unfortunately, but it's going to come off and try it again. Oops. Okay, 448 and 0.42, so yeah, capacitance goes up, ESR is coming down. We've got some very small, we've got a 0.47 at 10 volts. I'm not even sure I'll be able to get the probes on this, <laughs> to be honest, it's tiny. But let's have a look, I'm not expecting anything good off of this. 
bit of trial and error is required obviously. Okay, so open circuit or low capacitance, which you would expect on something that low, it can't read components of uh, that lower value. Okay, here we have a 1, which again I don't think this will read, but we'll try. Oops, really hard to get the probes in there. No. Okay. okay, let's try again. Okay, so yes, it will read one mic and 6.0 ESR. So I think with uh, the surface mounts, probably a little bit of experience will uh, will help, and uh, you'll quickly build up a good idea of uh, when to rely 100% on the meter and uh, <coughs> excuse me, and when you uh, might have to take a component out circuit to uh, to check it further. I'm just going to end the this uh, section here and uh, we'll move over to a quick uh, peek inside if you'll pardon the pun. Okay so we'll just uh, have a quick look inside this. I'm just going to turn it off. This uh, is, um, I mean it's very well, I'm just going to have to zoom out there I think. There we go. Very well made as I said in the, uh, in the earlier clips this is uh, Pretty much all made in and around the UK uh, by Peak themselves, obviously with other companies involved. It's really nice quality and uh, we'll just pop back off. Just going to zoom in a little bit. There are just three easily removed screws in the back of this. off. There we go. Front comes off. The, uh, oh wait, let me zoom back out again. Make it a little bit easier. Just the two buttons sat in there which come out. So, <coughs> I'm sure spare parts are available if you should ever drop your soldering iron uh, across the front and burn it or anything silly. I'm sure Peak will be able to supply bits and pieces for this. Uh, that's a look at the inside. I'll just fire this up. There we go. I've got no problem with the level of the bleeping but uh, possibly in a very busy loud workshop you might uh, struggle with it but it's perfectly loud enough uh, for me. I had heard of people making holes in the case to make it uh, a little bit louder but uh, there's no issues for me here. So I'm turn that off and uh, take the battery out. I saw earlier it's just one of the 12 volt batteries. Just have a quick look at the back. Yeah, nothing uh, to worry about here. The uh, heat shrunk cable is pretty well securely soldered on there. But again, pretty easy to put right if anything ever did go wrong. And uh, yeah, I quite like the whole of this board really because it does look like if uh, anything did go wrong you might well be able to uh, save it. The LCD panel is just on a little header through here. The chips, I'm just going to see if they're actually marked. Yep, uh, this board is marked uh, Peak 2009 and it says Atlas ESR 60 slash 70. I'm not seeing any revision number. We've got CTL1 then 10-06 on the board and around the front here you know there's just a sticker with 46919 on it. The uh, you know, display just floats slightly there. That's probably not brilliant for the dry joints that might cause on this row of pins. I don't know why but probably 
I don't know why they haven't rather, but I, I think I perhaps would have just put a uh, little double sided sticky foam uh, underneath that. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this. Let me see if I can gangle that right. Yeah, you see, you know, long term that might develop dry joints. Not really a major issue, but I uh, can't see why a couple of little pads couldn't have been put underneath there just to secure that in place. But other than that, it's a um, yeah, very nice, well-made piece of gear. You can see the programming connection uh, on uh, on this side. Uh, I talked to Jeremy, and uh, I think there have only been very minor software changes uh, since this one uh, was uh, sent to us. Uh, so I don't think there's anything much to talk about uh, software change-wise. Back end of the case, again, nicely made, no problems at all, made in England. You'll notice here that the case just lightly grips the, uh, the heat shrunk cables there. Uh, I think you'd have to give that quite a tug to, uh, to do some damage. Always entirely obvious to me which way around the battery goes if you look there. Uh, focus. Both ends are um, <laughs> very similar. So we'll just look at the markings. Oh, where are we? Negative, so that's got to be that way. That's it. Good guess. I do like the LCD display on that. It's really clear. I don't know whether that's coming over. Uh, okay in the video hopefully it is uh, but yeah it's uh, a yeah, very nice unit are there any problems well not really but I would have to say that I would still prefer the leads to have been longer I know this is an issue uh, with getting it to work uh, with the longer length cables uh, it's just long enough I, I still prefer the length of the leads on the Capacitor Wizard because I can have that bolt, uh, you know, mounted on the wall and the, the cables are such that I can uh, use it you know, three, four foot away from where it's, uh, where it's actually fitted on the wall. Um, the other thing I would love to have seen is um, just perhaps some little silicon rubber feet just on the back, possibly even covering the the screws, or, or perhaps not, if you've got to change the battery every, you know, six months or a year or, or whatever, or maybe uh, just four fitted on there. And the reason is because the cable, because the leads are a little bit shorter than I would like. When you pick the leads up, because this is heat shrunk and it's quite stiff, especially in the cold workshop, this will just, you know, sort of spin around and can be a bit of a pain. Um, in fact, I'd love to see a little stand that just holds it at an angle with some feet so uh, yeah imagine the tweezers and just you know it's slotted in at an angle into some little plastic stand that would be far better you can read the, the display at, you know, when it's lying flat but it's much nicer if it was pointing up at an angle like that and I've got, I have a sneaky feeling we mentioned this before and I don't know whether Peak were thinking of, uh, of designing a, a little mount for it or uh, or not because that, that would solve all the problems if it just raised it up a fraction and lifted it to that angle and you had little rubber feet on the stand it would be perfect you could uh, put it wherever you wanted and uh, happily work on the board without it um, sliding all over the place perhaps that would be a little project uh, I need to do for uh, for these ones. I'll certainly speak to Jez about it at peak, see if they ever decided to uh, to do anything like that. So, yeah, that's about it. That's about all I can think to uh, to say. Really, it's been very reliable. Um, oh, I was going to show you the automatic discharge function, but uh, I think I might have to do that on another video. I tell you what, no, I'm going to do it now. I'm just going to grab. power source and I'll see if this will uh, 
work. I suspect it might not, but we'll give it a go. Just see if this reads any sort of charge. Yeah, I'm going to have to zoom in on that for you because it happened really quickly and uh, the charge wasn't very high. But you'll get an idea of how this, what you see on screen. I think we might need the mat back for this. So you know, if it had its own little stand, I wouldn't be worrying about this, would I? <laughs> right. Let me just make sure that's readable. Okay, I'm just going to charge this. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to charge this up a little bit higher. It's a 35 volt, 470. Um, I set the power supply. It's not plugged in, so I'll have to do it as I did a moment ago on this uh, on this 9 volt battery. Just given that a small charge, and if you just keep an eye on the display, you'll just hopefully see it say discharging. And it's gone into <laughs> gone into its auto off. Let me just charge that cap up again. Yeah, I would love a adjustable user adjustable auto off time. Right, just keep an eye out on the display. Discharging 8 volts, there you are. Hopefully you saw that. That is what will happen if you are attaching a charged capacitor. But no higher than 50 volts. Okay, um, yeah. As I said earlier, we've got a special offer on the forum at the moment. Uh, so all forum members can uh, log in and uh, have a look if they're interested in one of these. And I will add on the other two meters, the LCR40 and the DCA55 uh, onto other videos uh, over the next day or two and uh, Peak have just announced a new meter that's hopefully being launched uh, in December uh, with the first unit shipping I think around the middle of December to all of those who have uh, pre-ordered it. Uh, hopefully we'll get our hands on a, uh, a demo uh, review version. I'm quite looking forward to that. It's uh, it's an improved version of the DCA55 as far as I'm aware that can handle uh, a lot more components that we are, uh, are obviously seeing these days. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll, uh, I'll catch you later.